Hello my people on the internet, you may notice that I didn't close my VS code yet and yeah, I'm making this video one by one continuously, I'm not stopping, I'm not going anywhere, so yeah, you may notice this is another video but for me it's just the same thing, alright? Well yeah, in the last setup we made our LDA to run and that's a Congo for you guys. And now we're gonna set up our server section, server files actually structure. I, I mean just a structure because in the server section we would have a lot of files. Okay, when I say a lot of files, that means quite a file. <laughs> okay, never mind. Now we will go to cd data slash, which means go back and go to cd server. Now we are in the server folder. Basically, you can also split us terminals by click on here we will have one terminal terminal for the client section one for the server but I will do that in the future I'm just keeping it this this way for now just to make you know the things a little bit more visible to you guys I'm not sure if it is visible or not but anyway we need to say npm initialize yes or you can say why okay this means you are you initializing the empty uh, npm uh, empty package json either have you have to say yes or you have to say why it just means yes okay now we're gonna we are going to install a few not a few a quite a, a quite a lot npm i uh, know no dependencies basically uh, pay attention here okay it's important for you we need to install first of all express javascript dependency to run on a server it just basically uh, a dependency that will set up a server and we can actually run over a uh, node JavaScript server. And then we have the .enme dependency. So basically .enme, .enme dependency lets us to read the .enme files which means wherever we, our environment variables are. So .enme, .enme file will keep some variables that we have we may have to change in the future but we don't want to change those variables one by one in all of the files. So we just make a file with the name of .env and we store the variables there. And in the future, if you want to change your website name, something like that, uh, not actually website name, just like you know, some URL that you have used in all of your server, all of your server files. So basically, you have to just change your URL there in the environment variable, and you don't have to change it anywhere else. That's the advantage of using .env, and it's also a little bit secure. So yeah, that's another point, if you ask me. Okay. Now we have .env, so after that we need to get mongoose, just basically a dependency for it that gives us functions to manage our, you know, to communicate with our MongoDB database. In our case, I'm using uh, MongoDB Compass. You can use MongoDB Atlas. It doesn't really matter because they're the same thing. I don't want to use Atlas because Compass is a little bit more faster for me. I mean, if you want to take your application to production level, you have to use something that's online on clouds some something like that okay so for now I'm using the MongoDB compass because it's on a local PC so we'll use joy for validation validating our uh, MongoDB models so what does validation mean let's suppose you are uh, you want to register a user and for a registration user has to give you a username password and email and these things are necessary now how do you check if the user gave you these things and if they he gave you the proper things what you are, what you're going to do normally is put put some if else statement. If request a body the phone is there, or if request a body the password is there, or if request a body that phone dot length is greater than this, stuff like that. But that's when joy comes in play. Basically, you make a new schema kind of like structure in joy, you exactly say what you want. You want the username to be minimum this, maximum that, blah blah stuff like that. And you just put your request body directly into that function. And it will check if basically if all of the things are correct if the uh, data that we got from the server and from the client section uh, from the client side from the client section if everything is correct then you can move ahead if anything is wrong it will even throw, show you the correct you know uh, it will just show you the exact error what's the issue password must be five length password is not there username is not there email is not correct email is not email type something like that it will just show you all of the errors and you're going to send those errors exactly back to the user without having to having to write all of this error by yourself you want to check if user.land is this uh, request response or json message is this okay you don't have to do that and that's the advantage and that's what I like well that was about the joy and then we have Morgan we're gonna use Morgan so basically Morgan is just 
for use it as dependency dependency that is you only use it only for development purposes it is basically you know console logs all of the requests that you're making to the server it will show you what type of request someone is making to your api and uh, where that request is going and what was the response of the object and of the request not the full response just the status code so basically it helps us to see if the request is being made or what happened to the request so we get an understanding of someone is making request to the web server okay that's a very advantageous thing when you're developing something and that's about the morgan and then we will have our cores so basically cores allow us to let another domain on another port to actually communicate with our node.js server so by default our node.js server will not allow the, it basically will not allow you to you know accept requests from another domains which you have you have not you're not you know allowing so you have to set up a course middleware in your express.js and you have to mention the origin you can mention all of the origins like your server is open to listen to requests from any domains anywhere or you can mention some specific domains specific domains in your origins and uh, yeah that's about the course you can also mention credentials true that means basically you're able to set the cookie stuff like that then we have cookie parser so cookie parser just basically allows us to read cookies from the server itself from the user side like user gives you some response and the cookie parser will allow you to read the cookies of that user and that's its job and then we have body parser so body parser just allows you to console log what type of what data is coming from the server like normally you will use express or json and it will work the same way but body parser has an it has an advantage in this case let's suppose you want to console log response the body you don't know what is coming back from the request of body you don't know what is coming from the user end so basically you want to see what type of data user is giving you so for in that case we have to use body parser we cannot use something else and uh, i would give it a point for that thing also and we need to use multer so multer we will be using for having our you know ma managing our file uploading system when someone is uploading a video or thumbnail into or on our server we will use multer to actually you know set up every uh, all of the file uploading stuff and then we will use fluent ffmpeg uh, fluent ff ffmpeg so basically fluent ffmpeg lets us take snapshots of video it actually doesn't only let us that fluent ffmpeg is just a great uh, i would say great tool it lets you do anything with the video okay I'm just taking an example. It it lets you this to this you know to take snapshots of, of the video on any move at any second where you want. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, we will use Fluent FFMPG only if the user doesn't give us any particular thumbnail. Okay, let me just take a look. Do we need anything else? Do we need anything else? Um, I think for now we have a uh, quite a large dependencies and they should have the work done but if we're in the future we may need some other dependencies I will just update you on that purpose let's hit enter and uh, let them get started in the build process great okay so basically it's done and congratulations guys for setting up all the dependencies correctly I know you might, you may have messed up somewhere some S somewhere and E somewhere and I know that that's totally fine it's pretty okay and another thing I'm using nodemon so you can just type uh, npm i nodemon add rate of 2.0.6 I'm using 2.0.6 version because uh, I don't know the latest nodemon version is just not for me because it had some issues I tried the latest nodemon version it had some issues while starting the server so I just said oh no I'm not doing that I'm just going back to node 1 2.0.6 because it automatically detects the you know file editing edits and it will automatically refresh your server and I will consider that as an advantage if you don't consider that as an advantage itself well yeah other than that we are pretty good to go so we set it up over package of JSON 
and these are the dependencies that we will be using Morgan Mongoose. I guess I'm, uh, you know, forgetting something. Uh, I'm just not getting it. So, I actually do, 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 do we need anything else? Do we need anything else? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot the main two main two dependencies. I was saying something is missing. I forgot the authentication dependencies. I forgot dependency of JSON Web Token. I was saying I'm forgetting something, but what is it? <laughs> so we need to also install JSON Web Token. JSON Web Token will basically give you JWT tokens, uh, and the tokens have few things. It has the first of all the when it was created, a payload, whatever you're going to pass in the token, and when it will be expired at. And basically, the JSON Web Tokens are used for authentication. You can send the JSON Web Tokens to the server, to the user cookies. You can add them to the cookie value, and basically, it will help us to log in, log out users. And that's about the JSON Web Token. We need another thing that's called Bcrypt JavaScript. So Bcrypt JS will actually hash our password, and it will do two things. First of all, it will hash our password. Hashing password means it will, you know, uh. uh or convert a password value into some random strings not exactly not exactly not fully random but it will convert it, them into a string using some algorithms uh, SHA 256 I guess by default and after hashing them once we want to log in the user we will do what we will use bcryptjs.compare method that will basically hash our new uh, hash the password that we are trying to uh, get, log in with it will hash that it will just get the old password that we saved in the uh, uh, database that was hashed before it will compare both of them uh, usually if the values are totally the same the hash should be fully same and you will see okay the hashes are same then okay you are good to go you can just move ahead and that's about the bcrypt.js and json web token we're gonna hit enter and uh, yeah let them install there and there we go we have two more things added here json web token and the bcrypt javascript so well yeah I guess that's probably it. Now we have to do what we have to start setting up our other things. I will just uh set up the uh, you know our uh, structures, few more folders that we're gonna create right now. Other than that, I'm not going to do anything else. In the uh, scripts you can have here uh start script for the development. Let me say um, we would like to start this start script. Here you can just mention how we want to start your script. By default, if you are going to start your script uh, while you have the de you're in the development platform, you should use PM2. It's very great. But you're, if you're normally just starting your script in your what do we say, in a local lab here, I'm going to say <laughs> we're going to use for that uh, Nodemon index.js. You don't even have to say it. You don't have to say npm start. Okay. You don't have to say it. If you're naming index.js as your main server file, all you have to do is just type Nodemon. It will automatically detect the you no know, index.js and it will automatically run all your, all your server. So we just have to say start script and just keep it there. We don't mind really much. Name is going to be Eldon YouTube. Okay, no capitalization. Good. Now we'll make a few more folders right here in the server. First folder will be with the name of controllers. It will be, it will be the folder where we are going to put all of our APIs. We're gonna manage all of the APIs right there. We will make another folder, make dir with the name of model. In this model folder, we'll put all of our, you know, uh, models or collections structure. We'll define all of them in there, schema stuff like that. We'll make another folder with the name of validation. In the validation folder, we'll put about joy validation schemas so that we can call them and we can actually validate if the data we're getting from the user is actually what we want to save so those are the three folders we have to make additionally in our server folder and in the future video we will be seeing how to get a work done with them but yeah see you in the next one bye bye